Hi, welcome to the Digital Yacht How To video series. In today's video we're going to be looking at our Pro AIS software and using it to configure one of our AIT-1000 Class B transponders. Now unfortunately the Pro AIS software only works on a Windows PC but uh, don't worry if you want to use the AIT-1000 on a Mac or a Linux PC it will work quite happily with those but this initial configuration and setup which you only have to do once will have to be done first of all on a Windows PC. OK, so this video assumes that you've already installed the Pro AIS software from the product CD that came with the AAT-1000 and uh, you'll find then that there's a Pro AIS uh, menu option in the start menu and I'm going to run that. So when Pro AIS uh, runs it will ask you first of all to put in the COM port of the AIT-1000 is connected to. Now Windows will allocate this and it will be different for every PC. Uh, on mine it's COM8 but on yours it will be a, a different COM number. If you don't know that you'll need to look in the device manager in the ports COM and LPT section where you'll see what COM number has been given to your AIT-1000. So once you know that number you enter it in the list and drop down list, select the right one and then click connect. As soon as Prior starts to connect to your AAT-1000 you'll see a series of uh, flashing green and red lights on the clear USB connector. Um, the green light indicates data from the AAT-1000 and the red light indicates data from the PC and you'll see both lights initially flash uh, as the communication is established. Uh, then it will settle down and it will just be the green light. So uh, once you've got that uh, connected and what we'll need to do now is start to enter the static data um, and the first bit of data to enter is your uh, boat's name uh, I'm just going to put in digital yacht here um, then next one is your VHF call sign now I, I don't have one of those so I'm not going to enter that but if you've got that uh, enter that in the call sign box and then the important bit which is the MMSI number uh, I'm just going to enter my MMSI number quickly now now please take extra care entering the MMSI number, double check and even triple check uh, the value um, to make sure it's right because that particular bit of information um, you only get one chance to to put the MMSI number in, everything else you can change but MMSI number can only be entered once and if you get it wrong it'll have to come back to Digital Yacht for reprogramming. Um, okay so I'm going to select the vessel type sailing a yacht. Uh, please don't change these uh, board rate settings 38,400 on the RS-232 or NMEA output because those are the correct settings for AIS data. However, if you've got this third drop-down box, if you haven't got this third drop-down box, it probably means you've got an older version of software in your AIT-1000. You might want to think about getting that updated. Uh, you can contact Digital Yacht to get that uh, the latest software file. But if you have got this drop-down box and you've got, uh, say, let's say, an instrument system connected to the AIT-1000's NMEA input or a heading sensor, then uh, you'll need to set that to 4800. Right, next um, is the ship's dimensions. So this, you need to enter these as accurately as you can. Um, and note that it is these dimensions are for the GPS antenna. Um, so wherever you've got the GPS antenna on your boat, you'll need to measure the various dimensions. I'm just going to set those up now. Um, finally, the last bit is the silent switch. Um, a lot of people now are fitting silent switches to Class B transponders. Uh, the benefits of this means that when the weather is great and there's uh, you know, good visibility and you're not in a busy shipping area, you can set this the uh, unit to work in silent mode where it just receives and doesn't transmit and that means that you don't get loads and loads of class B AIS targets on the screen um, and I think you'll find um, in the coming years that a, an etiquette of, of always putting your unit into silent mode except in bad weather conditions, bad visibility or when you're crossing the shipping lanes will start to be adopted by most people so assuming that you've got a silent switch fitted, fitted then you'll need to select the make external switch to enable silent mode so when you turn the switch on it will be it will stop transmitting and be in silent mode and when you switch it off it will start to transmit again and that's it as far as the uh, the main uh, settings are concerned uh, I'm going to save those now to the AIT-1000 
and you will get this warning popping up just asking you to check once more that your MMSI number is correct um, just double check and then click yes and then you get confirmation that the uh, transponder has been updated um, now we can go to the diagnostics page and you'll see here that uh, it sees that we've got an MMSI number set up we've got we're getting a GPS position fix we haven't transmitted anything yet and that can take between about uh, I don't know anything from 30 seconds up to about uh, three minutes before it transmits its first position um, so that's why you've got this yellow TX timeout um, but we are receiving data here we go we've received 285 uh, targets on channel A and 240 on the other uh, channel B. Now we're just waiting patiently for it to uh, transmit its first position um, and that should happen in the next uh, minute or so. Just while we're on this page uh, I'll take you through the, the important uh, voltages, that's the supply voltage, uh, that needs to be uh, above 10.6 uh, volts uh, for correct operation. In fact while I've been talking you'll notice that the green lights come on, we've got four ticks which means that all the uh, everything's working correctly and that we've transmitted our first transmission report and that will gradually increment uh, we'll uh, once we start to move and, and our speed over the ground is more than a knot or so that will uh, we'll start to output our position every 30 seconds when we're at anchor and we're not moving uh, it's only every three minutes that it uh, transmits a position so that's uh, the diagnostics page. Last but not least, I'm just going to take you to the options mode. Now, I always recommend people to set the uh, output GPS data to every second. Just means that it's whatever you're connecting to is going to receive the GPS data um, at the best possible frequency. Um, and also, I always turn on the enable WAS, which is the wide area augmentation system. It means you'll get much more accurate um, GPS location. Um, so let's put that to update. And if we now go back to GPS status, um, you'll see that we're getting uh, good signal strengths on all the uh, GPS satellites. And uh, if you see a blue bar like that, it means that that's a, a new satellite that's detected. It's not started using it yet for for uh, navigation, but it will do if, if necessary. And then these red bars are the WAS and EGNOS satellites, which it's using to get that extra level of uh, accuracy. So really, that's about it for ProAS. Uh, we will have another video on ProAS, which is talking about the diagnostics capabilities of ProAS. Uh, so look out for that. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.